I've lived in Louisiana my whole life. I was uh, born and raised in Louisiana. I've lived in different areas, but I've been in this area for probably the past 50 years. I've been welding in the uh, nuclear industry, the petrochemical industry along the Mississippi River. That's uh, basically what I've done for my occupation. I am retired now. I had to retire because I got sick. My name is Thomas Tillman and I have PAD. I've often been asked what is peripheral arterial disease and some would say it's diminished blood flow to the legs. Peripheral arterial disease is predominantly due to atherosclerotic disease. And the risk factors for that are the same as they are for coronary disease. They include high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, family history, and cigarette smoking. I smoked for a long time. I saw it when I was a little child. The problem with the diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease is it's simply not on the radar. Women are frequently misdiagnosed and typically don't develop the disease until later in life. Peripheral arterial disease is a disease of senescence or aging. I first learned in 2016 in April that I had PAD. I had been having trouble for like 10 years or, or longer. It started out as an ulcer on my shin, on my right leg. Which really was just the symptom of what was going on in his body, but it paralyzed him. He couldn't do anything. My muscles in my legs, my calves would get uh, tense, they would tighten up, they would just get stiff, and they would, they would hurt, not terrible, but they would hurt. And that, was a sign, you know, that blood wasn't getting to my legs and don't take a nuclear physicist to figure that out. Many people feel no symptoms at all or they adjust their lifestyle to where they just don't feel symptoms. If one is to have a symptom, however, with peripheral arterial disease, the symptoms would typically be pain in the legs, the calves or the buttocks with walking. Patients may have true ischemic rest pain. They may develop ulcers on the feet, and those are certainly signs of very advanced disease. Uh, many people just have unusual symptoms, a little bit cramping, things that they don't recognize. Uh, and so we cannot say if someone's not complaining of symptoms that they don't have peripheral arterial disease. Some just adjust their lifestyle and walk slower to where they don't feel the pain. Yet it is crucial we make the diagnosis because of the link between peripheral arterial disease and death. A patient who's been diagnosed with peripheral arterial disease is more likely to die of a heart attack than a heart attack survivor. The most effective tool of telling if someone has peripheral arterial disease is for a physician to just use his fingers and check pulses. If they're absent pulses, the patient probably has blocked arteries. When I suspect peripheral arterial disease, there are a series of tests I can use to confirm. This is a test that we can do called an ankle brachial index. It is the most widely used test where we measure blood pressure in the ankles and blood pressure in the arms. And uh, if it's lower in the legs than it is in the arms, then you have blockages. The ultrasound allows us to actually see blockages and allows us to see blood flow. CTA is a CAT scan with contrast, and that actually gives us images of the arteries. When I first started uh, seeing a, a doctor about this ulcer that was uh, starting to form on my leg, I had uh, a bypass surgery done to try to get blood flow to my arteries in my legs. After about two months, the doctor told me he has to do more surgery. But then I received a phone call saying, forget the bypass surgery in my leg, come in, we're gonna amputate. It was pretty bad and, and, and I, like a lot of people, I pray. So I was praying for my leg and I was asking those doctors, hey, you know, y'all gotta save my leg. 
nobody wants to lose a, a limb, their leg, or, or whatever it might be. We just kept praying, and when Tommy told the doctor no, that he did not want an amputation, all the other doctors from that point had said they couldn't do anything for him. He was too bad off, too blocked up. We found out about Dr. Walker, and it was a, a process of time, but he slowly was able to do more and more every procedure. So to us, he was God sent. Hi, Mr. Tillman. Hey, Dr. Craig. How, How are you doing? I'm doing well. Great. Okay, yeah. Mr. Tillman had an extensive history of peripheral arterial disease before I ever met him. But let's check those foot pulses. And he was told he needed both of his legs amputated. And he asked if I could help him. He didn't say, maybe I can help you, or hopefully I can help you. He said, I believe I can help you. So Mr. Tillman's case was an emergency case in a sense, in that he had an ulcer that was not healing, great risk of an infection and losing his legs. They pretty much immediately did a CT scan on me to find out where the blockages were. My whole system was blocked up worse than I would have ever thought. He started doing uh, one-day procedures. He had some of the most advanced treatment you can possibly get. Very difficult things. Many would have considered impossible things to accomplish. Very difficult case because prior surgeries had limited the access site. So we came from uh, the elbow area in an artery and we were able to go into the abdomen, open up both of those arteries. Then he had blockages as well below the hips and we're able to open those arteries as well. Once we restored blood flow, very rapidly the wounds healed. He literally saved his legs, both of them. I stayed in a wheelchair for like a year and a half. Once I started getting better through uh, procedures done by Dr. Walker, I was able to start using a walker then to a cane, and now he can actually walk without anything, and um, it's amazing. And he can even drive a car now. I almost sold his car like <laughs> a whole bunch of times, thinking he would never drive again. But he can drive, he can use that le right leg again. Four years later, he's got my, my blood flowing pretty well. By identifying peripheral arterial disease in its early stages and making sure that we take appropriate preventive measures, they can clearly improve life expectancy and quality of life. Historically, the management of peripheral arterial disease, at least atherosclerotic peripheral arterial disease, was surgical. And it was either going in and cutting out the area of blockage and repairing the artery or bypassing around the area of blockage. But what revolutionized that was the concept of using a balloon where you could go in with a small device, blow a balloon, and it would stretch open an artery. And now we have many other techniques. One of the techniques is a stent. And then we have methods by which we can remove plaque. We have devices that can grind through very hard uh, plaque that's like bone. We can use laser. Laser is a very uh, uh, elegant way of treating blockages because laser light, uh, certain forms of laser light not associated with heat, can go in and actually photoablate plaque. There's been dramatic progress in the treatment of peripheral arterial disease, including really innovative new things where we actually, instead of trying to get the blood via the arteries to the legs, actually converting a vein into an artery to fill the capillary bed backwards. These are very novel new concepts and they're being associated with very high rates of limb salvage. So I think really it's like almost everything that we've seen in medicine. Scientific progress is really booming and sometimes the practice of medicine takes a while to catch up to that. I'm very, very fortunate to have a wonderful family. All of my children would take turns coming and staying a week or two weeks or in helping me out. All of our grandchildren 
were so encouraging to Tommy during all this, these hard times and hospital stays and procedures. And um, they would draw pictures and send notes and um, really encourage him. Well, it's blooming pretty good. Nowadays, to help me uh, be healthier, well, of course, I, I stopped smoking. It'll be four years pretty soon that I haven't smoked. And uh, I do try to eat better. For Mr. Tillman, he is now on aspirin. He is on medications which make you less likely to clot. We're making sure his blood sugar is perfect. We're making sure he's doing daily exercise. And he understands very clearly the importance of routine follow-up. It's definitely uh, or certainly good to be able to get outside and do things outside. Now, Sarah, you got a, uh, a trophy? Oh my goodness, I like it. You, you rode that sheet good. Nowadays, I feel wonderful. And, and I guess like a lot of situations, you don't really realize some things that you may have and, until you don't have them anymore. It feels good to be able to walk. He's actually now starting to go walk around the yard more because the kids love it's like a hiking trail to them you know in the yard and it's really fun and something they've always liked to do and he's able to do it on the tree look straight directly in the back there see it has a red head and straight directly in the back see him i don't see him <laughs> he's pecking a tree down look, he's right straight there i love what i do i love what i do because when we can help a patient, we really become a part of their family. Life is awesome now. <laughs> it's well, amazing what uh, Dr. Sure. Walker has been able to do, and uh, Tommy's just getting better and better and better. I even ran with one of, one of my grandchildren, not you know very fast, but so it's, it feels great. I'm doing very well. Good catch, sweetheart. <laughs>